Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. For this Foundry Quick Tip, we're going to show you the power of macros. Macros have the ability to automate common functions and things that you do often in a way that will help take your experience to the next level. For this video, we're going to specifically look at the shape change macro for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, currently maintained by TKL on, the Git, on this GitLab snippet here that you see on screen. Uh, but it also had other developers like Drentil, Shark That Walks Like a Man, and others in its history. Okay, first, let's get the macro into the game. Go to the link in the description of the video to get the latest code for the macro. From the GitLab screen, select the Copy File Contents icon. Then, let's go back to Foundry. We're going to click on one of our empty hotbar slots, and it's going to create a macro by default. We're going to change the name to Shape Change Macro. Uh, we're going to give it a snazzy icon real quick. Creatures, abilities, uh, I'll pick the first one. And then we're going to change the type to script. Very important so it doesn't just put text in a chat. And then we're going to paste the macro in the command section down here. And we're going to hit save macro. That's it. Now the macro is ready to go. Let's take a brief moment here to look at the Wild Shape spell to give you an idea at how the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system handles shape changing. And that will help us better understand exactly what the macro is doing. So Pathfinder 2nd Edition uses what they call spell effects to change the underlying stats of the actor that they apply to. For Wild Shape, this includes different spell effects for all the different forms. So, we can see that Wild Shape heightens at second level to include animal forms. So I can click that to open it. I'll make this a little bigger. When we scroll down, we can actually see different animal forms, each with their own clickable link. Each one of these links is actually its own spell effect. So, what I will do is I will grab Hal here, and I'm going to drag the ape form to his token, and now it's applied to him. I can close all this, I can open HAL, and we can see by going to the effects tab that he is under the spell effect animal form ape. And if I go to the actions tab, I can see he now has the ape fist attack. Ooh, a 14, I don't think that's gonna cut it HAL. But that's how the shape changing works in this system. Once the spell effect is applied to the actor, the actor gets all the boosts and attacks and benefits of that effect. So, as you can see, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition base system can handle shape changing all on its own, but it's a decent amount of work to dig down into those spells in order to drag and drop it to an actor. So, let's take a look at the macro. So, first things first, let's remove the existing effect from the effects tab on Hal. So he's no longer in the form. So next, we're going to select our token and then click the macro to execute it. It's going to give us a prompt asking us which spell is being cast. In this case, we're going to select Animal Form and hit Next. And then it's going to ask us on the next screen to choose our form. We will leave the Ape Form cast at level 2. I'm going to uncheck the token image just for now and hit Transform. And just like that, I can open Howl again. We can see the spell effect is applied by the macro. The attack with the Ape Fist action is there just like it was before. 26 is a little bit better of a roll. Good job, Hal. And to remove this effect, instead of removing it manually from the effect screen, all we have to do is, while our wild-shaped token is selected, run the macro again, and the effect is removed, as we can see there. Not too bad, right? But let's try that other cool feature of the macro, the change token image. Okay, so select Hal, run the macro, choose animal form, go to next, Choose Ape again. Let's leave change token image selected. Hit transform and oops. As you can see, we just get the default token image for Foundry. Well, that's because we have not gone in and set all the images up properly. For this, let's swap to Clovis, our resident druid, which I have set the images up for. So for Clovis, if I open this screen here, you can actually see in this folder called Clovis Art, I have not only Clovis's image, but all the images for all the other forms already set, sharing the same directory. We have the base image, which is just Clovis, 
And then the other ones, for instance, ape is Clovis ape, bear is Clovis bear, canine is Clovis canine, etc., etc., for all the animal forms. So this time I will run the effect again on Clovis. I will choose animal form. I will choose ape and I will change the token image and presto. We can see now that as the spell effect is applied, the macro also changes the token image to match the form that we're changing into. So now Clovis, with the push of a button, gets his token in the ape form. And if I run the macro again, not only does the spell effect get removed, but the token goes back to its regular image as well. Also, because the Pathfinder 2nd Edition spell effect system handles lots of cool things, let's look what happens when I heighten the spell. In this case, I will heighten the spell to level 4, and when I run it again, oh, look at that. Clovis not only changes his token image, he also becomes a large creature. Because level 4 of the animal form spell makes you a large creature, the system reflects that automatically, and the token adjusts with the art automatically as well. How cool is that? And one last tip to close it out. Typically, it's been my experience that a character will have a usual go-to form, usually like animal form until you're high enough level for the dinosaur form. Uh, luckily, the macro has an easy way to set your preferred form. For Clovis, he's only high enough level for animal form. So let's edit that macro. We can see a variable here at the beginning called preferred form. It defaults right now to dinosaur. So let's change dinosaur to animal and save the macro. Now we can see that the macro defaults to the animal form here instead of dinosaur form, which saves me a few seconds selecting it every time I cast a spell. I can go to next. I can choose the uh, frog form, transform. Just like that, we can see Clovis is now a frog. There's a whole world of macros out there. Some are included in the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system. Others are created by the community. Make sure to use them to help take your game's automation to the next level. And until next time, take care. Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe down below so you can get notified of more awesome content coming your way. Also, make sure to follow our channel's Twitter, at Recall Knowledge, for the latest information. Thanks for watching.